this video, I'm going to give a basic introductory overview to working with blueprints inside of Unreal. This can be one of the biggest steps that an Unreal developer can take. The backbone of Unreal Game Engine is C++. However, for a very long time now, Unreal has offered us the capabilities that we can actually use a visual scripting process called blueprints. With that in mind, one thing that I've noticed as I've taught Unreal over the years is this can be a bit of a jump for folks, especially those coming from computer science backgrounds. You have those core knowledges such as functions and variables, arrays, methods, etc., creating classes, you name it. However, instead of writing these from top to bottom in a text-based document, we now move into a more visual representation of what each of these elements do and how they hook into actual objects in the game environment. Now, what, f first thing first, whenever you start out with a brand new level, I want to draw your attention all the way up to your main bar here where you can actually click on the drop down. And this is kind of a core spot where you can find a lot of blueprint information, including creating your own blueprints. But also too, I'd like to point out to start out with opening the level blueprint. Each level is going to have its own blueprint attached to it. And this is a great way to get started as far as when you're working in a game environment. So if I go ahead and open the level blueprint, this is the type of environment that you see. Again, you have different events that are attached specifically to how the game loads. So for instance, do you want things to begin when the game loads? Or do you want the game to be listening for things every time there is a tick as far as the frames per second is concerned. I'll get into these a little bit later in another video, but I did just want to show you these are the types of environments that you will be working with as far as getting started inside of Blueprints. There are a lot of different things that we can do as far as video playing, audio starting, etc. that we will often tie into the event begin play as far as what actors we want to target. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out this blueprint window and that actually brings me to the next element here. Whenever you're working with blueprints, you have a couple of options. First off, let me go ahead here and let me make just a really quick shape here and place it in the game environment. So we're going to just place a cube here. Now here's where things get a little bit different. The cube is a static mesh actor, which as you can see, I could actually edit its C++ if I wanted to. By default, Unreal will want to go to something like Visual Studio. However, there are edits in the preferences that if you want to change this, you can. Now, however, though, I can also convert the actor. And this is where notice you have that same icon here that you had up at the top here where it shows the list of blueprints available to you. You can actually click and as you get more comfortable with blueprints, you can begin to make your own set of blueprints. That means you can reduce, reuse, and recycle as far as creating different types of actors. So here you can see as far as the static mesh actor, which is uh, the component for the cube. And I could make a whole brand new blueprint called cube blueprint if I wanted to. Then anytime that I have a cube in the future, I can go ahead and assign this. Again, though, we'll get into this a little bit later because I want to show you also if I cancel out and I come back up as far as my blueprint drop down, you can actually see that I also have project settings that I can override, but more specifically, under blueprint classes, you can create empties, you can convert, but notice some items in your game environment, and I'm using the base starter content, already have blueprints attached to them. So for instance here, let's take a look at the blueprint for third person character. One of the things and one of the big reasons that we actually do like to use things like the predefined assets. Here you can see, and I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen here, as far as all of the mapping and events that Unreal has done for you right out of the gate as far as setting up a player character is concerned. 
I want to say eons ago, but it's probably more like 10 years ago. We didn't have these types of options. We would have to come in and actually create not only things such as the actual player character, but then we would have to set up all of the event graphs as far as creating how it looked, where the camera was, and what did we want to do as far as controls for the player. Even just thinking about this, think about this from a VR perspective. For the longest time, we didn't have a preset virtual reality game template, and now we do. It could take a really long time, not only to map the headset as far as how the headset would interact with the game environment, but also whether or not you wanted to have the hand controls in that same vein. These are great as far as a studying mechanism that can show you how to get started in your own game. This isn't an end-all be-all as far as how you want to control your assets, or in this case, your player. But it is a good starting point to get a feel for what type of functions did they use. So you can see here the little F as far as function, and also how they set up different connections as far as inputs and outputs. The last thing that I want to talk about in this starter video is just also another huge element outside of the objects that you place in the environment, such as your lights, your audio, your player, any type of special effects. And that's over under actors. There's an entire section called volumes. A lot of the volumes that are available to you are bread and butter when it comes to actually working with blueprints. Things such as the Kill Z volume is great as far as, you know, whenever you fall out of the world. However, you are going to have to set up blueprint connections as far as a spawn location that if the player falls out of the world, yes, it will kill off the avatar, but then how do you spawn the avatar back? That is something you would control with blueprints. Another one that I often start students out with, and is probably one of the favorites, is the age-old trigger volume. So you run into a trigger area and it something happens, a door opens, or somebody, you know, you get a message popping up saying that, you know, there is something available for you to pick up, etc. Um, you have a lot of different options. You even have pain causing volumes that maybe you put around fire or if you have a spike pit that can actually take health off of your player. Again, though, you have to have a command of using the blueprint platforms. So with that in mind, it can be kind of a long road whenever you're first starting out with this. However, it can really pay off in the end, and it is a very, very unique skill set that can really set you apart from other developers.